I'll send out a couple of information about it. Verify the audio is working all right. Hello, hello, hello. Seems fine. Send some tweets out and a Facebook message. So, so today, I'll explain what we're doing today. Right, so, we last week we had our meeting. We all met up, we all had a big chat about future of the game, the future, our direction and that sort of thing. We've got a much better idea of what's going on now. Um, we've all got a good clear objectives for us to go to, for us to do. Um, my first one is still to finish the free play update, clearly. And that's what I'll be working on today. Um, also, in between stuff happening, I'll be going over some of the recent changes that's happened this week since we, as there's been a whole week of work in between uh, the meeting and this. And uh, additionally, I'll go over what the plans are as we're implementing them. So the minute I'm implementing, <coughs> sorry, I need to get some coffee probably soon oh I do have a coffee I left it downstairs um, but to start with uh, we're just going to go over we're just going to be implementing some of the free play menus so I've spent a lot of this week doing this and there's still more to do on it hopefully a lot of it's finished now uh, see so yeah, you'll notice a few new things here this is about saving setups. Um, so the idea is you can set a game up how you like it, then save it, and then um, so next time you want to play a game with the same settings, you can just load that game, uh, load those settings. Uh, additionally, and this is something I haven't started yet, and we'll see if we get onto it today. I want to do. Uh, I need to close the window because the drilling outside. It's lovely. Lovely noise. Um, is uh, sharing settings. So I want I want people to be able to come up with like the best game mo uh, game setups in free play. Um, and for them to be able to share them with each other. Uh, and I think the best way for me to approach that at the minute is is through string sharing. So just have a string you can copy and paste to people which will bring a, their free play setup into into your game and you can save it for yourself and we'll see if we'll get onto that today uh, another th new thing that hasn't been implemented in the game yet but it's has been put into the menus is the victory condition so that's offering a endpoint for free play and what that's going to do is as you get close to your victory condition, it's going to up the difficulty. So basically the game should ramp up in difficulty as you get closer to your victory condition. Um, 
we'll see how that works in practice. I'm not sure how, how well it's going to work. It's going to require quite a bit of testing, I believe. Um, so yeah, there's there's a few things what's going on today. I'm just going to go grab my coffee. Uh, I'll bring you a, open that, and that's like a basic setup menu where you can select a setup um, that you've got saved. Um, I'll be back in two minutes. less than a minute. Right, okay. So now we have the coffee. We can get to work. Okay, so I've been working on this save as functionality for it. I've, I've actually created a save game object. I've got that functioning fairly well. I think it hasn't been properly tested yet. But I have, what I haven't done yet is have a, is make the game look for save games. So what I wanted here was a few uh, default ones. I'm not actually sure what I want the default ones to be yet. And I suspect that will change during testing. So basically there's going to be a drop down menu here. And at the top of the list will be the default ones. And they'll be... For example, the titles of those will be translated. The um, uh, and all that jazz, and then underneath will just be all the all the ones that the players saved. So we'll get to work on that now. It's a good starting point for us. Okay, so. Uh, what we want is the construction script. That's the construction. Okay, so this is the stuff about finding your former carrion species. I believe that will work still. Let's double check. I'll double check by testing this out. Loading the menu with a minute. So, what other people have, uh, have been working on? So, what Liam and Matt have been working on in the meantime, uh, they've been working on optimizations, uh, and I believe that's basically going to be their what they're focusing on for a little while until until they've they feel like they've squeezed out as many optimizations as possible. Already, some of the optimizations implemented have caused issues, uh, which was totally expected. Um, let me just double check. We can actually. So, QV. Yeah, so that's loading the names of, um, of the colonies. Fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, this is what we're putting stuff into next. The uh, this drop down menu here, and this should, if I untick some of those and accept, and then go back to advanced. Uh, no, that failed. Oh, that's because it's the all creatures. Yeah. Okay. So there's the first thing I need to do. Let's look at these. But these should these should say fine, yeah they should, they say fine. So it's the all creature buttons. The pads can't walk about. Things I need to jot down already.
Okay, I'm not going to look at that yet. I'm going to stay focused on what what we what we were talking about, which is this drop down menu. So I might not have been getting the chat messages there. If anyone said anything in chat, <laughs> so I have to say it again. Um, okay. That's the one. Okay. So this is it's gonna add a pin on here. I'm just gonna add a function. It's just gonna run a function saying uh, set up set up what's it called? Set up setup. <laughs> Set up, set up. Why not? So we're setting up the, the free play setups. So set up, set up. Right, what we want to do here is, okay, so similar to what we did with colony species, uh, in fact, it should, it's basically the same as this. And so I'm going to copy and paste it and we'll uh, deal with it afterwards. Yeah. So it's actually a little bit tricky. I'm going to copy and paste the whole, oh, copy and paste the whole thing. Mostly because we're going to need something very similar. Okay, so rather than save setup slot number. This that can be a local variable actually. Um, set up slot number. Set that to zero at the beginning. Then essentially we loop through, so you can have up to a thousand setups. Yeah, I can see the chat now. I, I wasn't able to before. I I was in the, it wasn't showing it me on the Twitch uh, dashboard for some reason. So I've just gone straight to the, uh, I've just gone straight into the channel I can see now. So if you, if you said anything before, um, post, post it again and I'll have another read. I'll have a read. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm looping through a thousand times and looking for things called, okay, so it's gonna be free, I think it's called free play setup. These are file names, so some free play setup and setup slot number. The 
best form of anti-piracy. Just making a good game. <laughs> yeah, well, hope hopefully, hopefully enough. There's enough honest people in the world to. Uh, and it and, and if if you uh, if you make your game consumer friendly, you'll find a lot of goodwill comes your way. I think. You should bring back the interactive object. Okay, do, do you plan to make different challenges? Make a different challenge for one, two. Oh, you mean instead of the... Um, uh, instead of the uh, mole crickets. I think with the, I think with the challenge modes, we're going to maintain the kind of thing that we've, we've done so far, which is to have one per tier rather than... Uh, which which can apply to both the levels, uh, maybe apply slightly differently, like we what we did on uh, two one and two two. That that they they applied to the levels in different ways, but it's the same creature. I think in three one and three two, uh, we've got an idea of what, what we want to do with the challenge modes with them. Although we have we haven't figured out the mechanics for that at all. Uh, we we did come up with some. But we weren't particularly happy with them, so we'll have to see. Okay, so essentially, here it's looping through a thousand times and saying, does that save game exist? So free play setup, uh, free play setup zero, free play setup one, free play setup two. If it doesn't exist, we just add one to the save slot number and move on. If it does exist, we load the game from that slot cast it to now it's not a formic save we cast it to free play setup save this is just an error message As a free play setup save. So this is what's adding it into the list now. So we need to get the correct list, which is game setup. Now we need to get the it's called name. Get setup name, yeah. So it's adding it to the list. Come back to chat in a second. I'm just going to finish going through this. Uh, okay, so it's finding the index that the op that option is at. Okay, so colony index to slots. Uh, okay, so I need to create a new one of these, and this one does need to be available everywhere it needs to be a full one so it's, it's not colony index to slots it's free play setups to free play no setup index so it's not save slot slot number it's this one Hopefully this will just work <laughs> like a Mac. <laughs> Not like a Mac. Never assume a Mac just works. Right, going back to chat. Ooh, got a, a backlog here. Uh, you should bring back the interactive object menu, but everything is highlighted until you click something. So it's so. Um, we liked that in some ways, but we actually discovered with it that people weren't finding um, weren't finding the stuff. So that's why we went to a, a more basic uh, menu level. It, we basically got some um, uh, negative reviews saying that, that because people didn't find the former carrier icon, uh, so they thought the the game was only had the demo levels or something like that. Uh, so I don't think we'll be going backwards that way. What we might do is more things like the spider level. So 
for example, if we if we want to put some extra secret levels in, which are only there at certain times, maybe some objects will be clickable. Maybe put some secrets in there. We'll have to see. Okay, carrying on. Pretty much how I saw the game has very positive reviews and yes, still in early access, which is a good started. Uh, yeah, I think we've um, we've had a lot of goodwill from people. They do. I think they're happy. The only thing people aren't happy with, and I understand, is the speed that we're going at, and that's because we're still. We're still a small group, and people say, "Well, why don't you just hire more?" It's hiring that staff and bring them to an active project is not simple. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad idea. It might be it might be a, a, a brilliantly sound business idea, but we'll work at our at our pace. But yeah, people are happy with the game in general. I think. Hey, John, how's how's it going? You're right. Oh, yeah. Hello, uh, David. Great work on the Leaf Cutter update, by the way. Uh, some of those mechanics aren't available to you at the colony. Yeah. I think what we might do is, as we go forward is make like plant climbing work in different ways for the Erector Colony. So maybe you've got... Um, maybe you've got uh, aphid farming... That the erector colonies can do on on plants and that sort of thing. We'll see as 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 we move forward, but it would be nice to have plants be climbable to some extent for the erector colonies. I plan on putting <laughs> reporting to the Sega Saturn. Oh, it's on. Uh, so it's our first port. Definitely will be the no. <laughs> oh, good old Sega Saturn. I never had one, but Matt did. What was it we played? There was some game with, like, multiplayer game with mice. And she, I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Nothing much. Love an ant game. Yeah. Who doesn't love an ant game? Live surface service sequel. <laughs> and game seventy six. God, everyone seems to be going the live service route these days. And all the big companies are. Problem is that puts so much expectation on your release schedule. Right. Okay, so that's. We've got a list here, which is, the the index is where it's positioned in the list, and the slot number is the, the number required to load the correct save. Right, now we've done that, something's broken. Uh, that okay right so now we should see the list of them let's see let's see what let's see what works it's probably not gonna work at all okay so at the minute that's just the default stuff let's go and create a new setup so this one's gonna have attack waves off and nest invasions off and we're gonna be a leaf cutter colony that's all I'm going to do, do at the minute. I'm going to hit save as. Lots of hellos come up. Um, test. This is a test level. Uh, test setup. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Looks like I've hit the maximum. Okay. Okay, so... Now, that won't appear in the list yet, because I haven't... I haven't made it refresh the list. 
However, if I close it, if I stop running and reopen it, oh, oh, okay. Let's have a look. Let's try and figure out what's wrong. Right, I'm going to have a look in my files to see if to see if that actually saved. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue is. Doesn't look like it's saved. Unless it's saved as something daft. Which it might have. There's one called test.sav. <laughs> Maybe it's that. I thought we did do a WSAD for the spider level. Does the spider level not control with WSAD anymore? We definitely did when when it came out. It, it's possible that we might have done something that broke it. Uh, the spider level control... Uh, you should be able to control the spider with the same keys that you control the map with. If you can't, then it's broken. I'll jot that down. on the list anyway I'll have a look but I'm pretty sure we did do that Right. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, I think most game studios do grow like that. We are, we we are being quite cautious. Um, we'll see. As time goes on, we'll see. Please give the option to attack the scientist at some point. <laughs> and to hear him scream. <laughs> If you finished year two, what would be your next? What, what, what would your next game be about? Um, we actually discussed that as part of the the big meeting. What, what, what the plans would be when when we actually finish year two? Uh, unfortunately, we're not we're not ready to uh <laughs> to speak about that yet. Uh, but we'll get there. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so the, I, I'm not convinced it actually saved, so it's in the save as menu. The saving happens. Where is it? Here it is. Okay.
Okay, so this is the save as stuff. Creates a save game object. Okay. Packs it all. Oh, this might be it. Ah, yeah, okay, that's wrong. See, the value of that is DD. That's wrong. That's what the issue is. Easy just plugged into the wrong put bit. Really sunny here at the minute. There we are. Set up name. Set up description. Well, that was an easy one to solve. They were just in the wrong way round. Okay. Let's try saving it and see if it appears this time. Replay, new game, advanced setup, save as, save. Cancel, cancel, new game. Fantastic. Right. Okay, so next I need, um, I need that, when you click on that, for it to actually change the settings to that. So that's the next step. So, uh, it's in the basic setup, I think. So we're looking at when this value changes to do something about it. Okay. So here we are, unselection changed. Let's find some space up at the top here. I need to comment this. I believe this is actually starting the game. What happens when the game gets started? Yeah, that's what that is. We'll come back to that. Okay, so selected item and selection type. Select in e select info enum. Key press navigation mouse click direct. It's just how it was selected. It really doesn't matter how it was selected, the same thing will happen. Right, first of all we need to get the position find up find get option at indexed no <laughs> get I've got to get the index at option find option index text yeah that's Right, I believe. Basically, we use that. That to find the, the number of the free play save, then we use that, does, does, Save game exist. Append. Ugh. Should be free play setup. 
Uh, and then the number, which is that. So this is pulling the file from the files. Okay, so if that if that does exist, then load say from slot load game from slot I'll come back to chat in a moment I'm just concentrating wants to get through this um, so if the same game does exist we load it then we cast it to a free play setup save then we reapply it. So current setup, set current setup equals the game setup. And we also need to change a few other things. Uh, uh, okay, so there's a good example of this in here. So this is the I'll just copy and paste it, but these are the various things that exist in the object. I've also this will just give me a uh, that's not the right place to paste this. Yeah. So just give me an example of what's there and what I need to sort out. Okay. So game setup the setup name. No, I don't need to do anything with that, I don't think. Maybe I do. No, I don't think so, because you already selected that from the list. That should be fine. Setup description, I need to do something with. That needs to go... Oh, this one's a bit complicated. Description text needs to go in there. So we need to set text. Next one down. Right, the map. The map is just an index. So but basically that should allow us to set an option at the index get the map set selected option that's the one Uh, the selected option should be that. Then I believe I've got a, where is it? Here it is, set, set up map option. Yeah, so I just should just call that. Ooh, set up map option. Okay, so the next one down in the list is map option. Confusing language. Map options taken from there, so it just needs to that should just be that. Oh, getting there, getting there. And finally, the species. So the species is saved, but 
obviously if you've picked the formal corrector species, not everyone has the same one, so you're going to have to select. A form of correct species. Just two bites. I think we need to do exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it should be exactly the same with that that we did with. I know this is taking a while, but I'd like to get this one ticked off whilst my brain's working well this well. <laughs> uh. The reason it's, this is a bit complicated and I can't just do, you know, set it to form corrector is because different languages have different things. So you've got to actually do it via the index in which order it is in. It was one of the major considerations when we, when we localized the game. Okay, so the one thing I haven't used is setup name, but I think that's okay. So what is this? This is selecting a new setup. Okay, is that everything? Is that everything I need to do when you select a new setup? I think it is. Right, going back to chat. Species like tractor arm, they aren't the same length. Of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about adding them into the and to adding them into the uh, the the gene thief colony is the uh, is is adding options for all those things. And you can say, well, you don't have to add options for everything, but. We've added options for everything else. I think an easier way of adding them would just be add them as their own species to free play. Because then there doesn't there isn't really a balance issue there. I think, I think especially the army ants would be very dangerous in a player's hand. So no missions for those species anymore. Um, right. I can talk about this one. Something we discussed on uh, during the meeting, during the massive multi-day meeting, was uh, was the possibility of adding more content to the game without uh, uh, without it being such high quality. Uh, so uh, additional content and. What we decided to do was was to add in to do uh, to do missions um, like side missions almost. We're not entirely sure how they're going to be implemented yet, but essentially there'll be missions that have objectives but no audio. Um, so they'll be quite basic, uh, well, sort of basic things. Think think like the the new demo level, for example. Um, yeah, see you later. Uh, good to have you with us. Yeah. 
and we so and I think the way we're going to do it is the idea is that each like each each of the three main members of the team spend a week at one at some point doing a uh, like, working on a new level working on one of these new levels so we just take a week out of the normal game development to do it and we'll rotate so and I think we're aiming for about one a month. So there should be a once once I've once I've put the free play stuff back in because at the minute it's dissected and we couldn't release a build at the minute. Uh, the idea will be to start trying to deliver these like small levels one a month to kind of keep new content coming, but also at the same time we're looking at ways of um, incentivizing these so give giving the uh, rewards to your former carrion colony for playing them. So essentially, it should reduce the grind, uh, the grind, it, the grind that you need to to get royal jelly. But also, uh, but also add new content into the game, and it won't be it, it won't, there won't be as high quality as the content you see in the game at the minute, but. Yeah. But it should give some variety to the game. And in those missions, quite a, a few of them might be like purely underground missions. Think like 1-1 one, one and 1-2. One, a few of them could be... Uh, a few of them could involve like species like the Trapdoor, for example. Uh, so the player can have a go as playing as a Trapdoor colony and stuff like that. Just allowing, allowing us to have different content without... Uh, without spending too much time on it and taking time away from the main campaign or take, taking too much time away from the main campaign yeah I, I understand the discord server thing and we might do it I mean, I do use Discord myself uh, just for playing games. Uh, I play a lot of Destiny, and I've got my Destiny clan on there. Um, but yeah, the I I do agree that we we should probably have a Discord server. We just it's just that you open up a new channel of communication like that, you've got to be careful to maintain it. I, th I think you're right though yeah yeah um destiny is doing well at the minute i'm very excited for the future of it the the latest season is, has been really good um and the messages coming out of bungie at the minute are so pro-consumer i say it's this it's this whole pro pro-consumer uh so uh, it's it's like is a game's decision decisions being made to make money or is it being made to make the game better and for too long now the big companies it's uh, the big companies like activision ea that they they're the ones pulling the strings and they uh and they make a lot of decisions to i mean they they should they're a business right uh, and they exist more to um more to make money they're, they're, they're like the big overarching entities they don't actually make the, the games themselves they uh, they get the, they p get the companies to make the game so their concern is making money but now Bungie is free of that then they're look at then they can look towards making a making uh, the game making decisions based on the game and hopefully I mean we yet to see it but hopefully that will lead to uh, the game actually becoming more popular. And hopefully this will be evidence that making decisions to improve the game is actually a, a viable or sensible financial alternative, uh, financial path. Not every game has to make huge amounts of money, but you can make more money. Um, 
by making pro consumer decisions. Only, this, only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's not, Is it, there isn't there. A company really should exist in the middle ground. If you go too far one way or the other, things either financially don't work out or... Uh, Or um, the the gameplay doesn't work out. I mean, you go too far one way, you essentially become a a gambling machine. If you go too far the other way, um, you die of lack of money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to these huge companies, they see one game making loads of money and all they do is try and repeat that. They then try and take their uh, their current franchises and they go through them and say, well, how can we turn this into this game? And how can we turn this into this game? So how can we convert all these people over here into spending the same amount of money as people are in this game? And that doesn't work. That doesn't always work at all. Uh, and that's when you end up with all games becoming the same thing. It's not good for the industry. All oh, right, you're part of a incubation group. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the, uh, I find that a lot of the government-based startup things or kind of funded startup things are more focused around making a business rather than making a game, which is, which is fine in one way. But I mean, I, 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 I've, I've been to things like that where it's all about make sure you're making a business and you're not making a game. And I think that's quite short-sighted in my in my opinion i know there's there's the other side of it where you're just chasing your dream and you think your thing's fantastic and you're blinded by it and you can't make and you it, it ends up you're not making something that's financially viable but there is a more holistic picture in my opinion and you've got to wear uh, you've got to take into account each side of it if you want to do well not just survive okay I'm, I'm going to try and get back to this. Um, I forgot where I was. I've been staring at the same screen for so long. Uh, okay, so I believe what what this is trying to do is reinstate a save situation. So let me just have a look, see if it works. So first of all, let's change a few things. So wood ants... Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. Uh, I'm going to change that now. I'm not going to write it down. I'm just going to fix it. Okay, so the unit option text is being put in the wrong place. So this should be it, yeah. Use option. 
So it's set in the text there. So It's just tied to the wrong thing, you know, be just because of my um, messing around with stuff. Okay, that should have got with that. That with that one. Okay, so let's pick a. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, I can't remember with the unit option came through in the. Perhaps it should. Just so people can make levels with certain setups, with certain species setups. Okay, so uh, the color isn't saved, nor is the colony name. Okay, so I'm just going to turn a couple of things. I'll turn Fog of War on and Attack Waves off. Right, the colony species hasn't come through. Okay, I'm going to do that now. Again, it's it's better if I do things that I spot them rather than just leave them for later. Okay, so when you clicked advanced, it didn't bring through the colony species. Selected option. Right, that should be what does that. Let me have a look. Okay, so that is being sent through. But it's not actually been set. Hmm. I'm speaking to the right box, aren't I? The other question is... Yeah. No, it's just, that doesn't make sense. The 
Oops. <coughs> Let me just check that we're actually talking to the right thing. Looks like we are. Just check that nothing's going on with the construction. Okay, yeah, nothing's going on with the construction. Nothing in construction. Um, This is um, this is just for me running a test to see if it's a race condition. Well, it's not actually called a race. A race condition, is something else. But it's what we we've been calling a race condition, which is basically one thing being set up before the other. So there, what I would expect is. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with what I was doing per se. But the uh, but the moment it's created, the when and when it runs that setup, the wood ant uh, option isn't there. My guess is that. A, comp a box like that, it's begin play is uh, triggered after the setup was run. That's a blooming awkward one. I bet that's happening with the map option as well. Oh no, it worked with the map option. Oh no, no it hasn't. It's set everything else up for Towhead, but the map still says the dunes. It'll be happening with all these uh, drop down boxes. Uh. Okay, so let me try something else which is adding it to the viewport. So at the minute, it's the setup's being run and then it's being added to the viewport. Okay, I've got a couple of things in my mind that might work here. But first things first is trying, adding it to the viewport, then changing, then running the setup. Now, what this might result in is it appearing in one state and then flash into another, which is not what we want. Uh, and I've done that before with things in the game and eventually built something in to get rid of it. But we'll see. So we'll come back to chat in a moment. I'm just really trying to get stuff done. Okay. Okay, so that seemed to work. And it worked instantly. Okay, that should be fine now. That's good. Yeah. Okay, leave it like that. Seems to work fine. Okay, back to chat. I thought they are billions and get absolutely demolished. <laughs> Great talking to you, mate. Yeah, always good talking to you. I do. Uh, I do intend to play. They are billions a bit more. A bit more. Have they released the campaign yet? I think they might have done. <laughs> I don't understand what you're doing, but I like to watch. 
Yeah, to be fair, it's um, the only reason I understand it is because I, I, I put it all together. It's, to be honest, if I watched someone else working on their game in Unreal Engine, a lot of it, I probably wouldn't know what they were doing because a lot of it's personal to your game. But basically all I was doing there was switching things around so they actually worked. I think when you add something to the viewport, so when something actually appears in front of you, that's when a lot of the options in the boxes and the default options get selected. It seems to be a little bit of a shame to me. Right. Either way, this seems all right now. All right, back in one minute.
to it. So, so a couple of things changed just to run a test. This, I don't think these actually do anything yet. Humbug. Okay, so that hasn't changed my colony species, hasn't changed the map. So it's time to investigate what went wrong there. Let's have a nose, see what comes up. Okay, so that's looking for something called free play setup four. Unfortunately, there is only one file in here, and it's called Free Play Setup Zero. So we're definitely looking for the wrong thing. Ah. Uh, yeah, I see what's wrong. Should be looking for that, not that. Pause its position in the thing. Ah, uh, okay, another problem. It's that saved over the previous one when it shouldn't have done. So now it's looking for free play setup zero, which is correct, because it's saved over the previous one. And it looks like it's loaded things correctly. It hasn't, right, so yeah, the, the unit option, I wanted to add that in. I've got that on my list of things to do. But okay, so that worked. However, what didn't work was saving. Saving saved it to zero again. So let's have a look at 
saving, shall we? Saving is doing the save as box here, and it takes this save slot name. Finally, have the opportunity to see. Where... Hey, welcome, welcome, Daniel Sly. Daniel Seven Sly. Just sleep. Okay. So, it's the save slot name we're looking at. We're looking at. Yeah, it's saving to free play setup zero again. Okay, so what we're actually looking for is where that's set. I believe it's set in here when we create the... So when you press the save as button. Yeah, it's this setup number. It's there. Highest setup number. Ah, yeah, I see what the issue is. Okay, so what this is doing is it's it's looping through all the saves and it's. And it's looking for um, looking for ones that exist. Each time it finds one that exists, it says, "Oh, that's the highest one." So it finds one a higher number down, and then goes, "Oh, that's the highest one." However, at this point, we're then basically finding one that already exists, the highest one. So in this case, it'll be zero, and using that, really, it should be one above the one that does exist. So. So we save them to a new slot. That's fine. That should solve that problem. One second, chaps. Okay, sorry about that. So we have Okay. 
switching a couple of things off, changing a couple of things around. There we are. That should be fine. Very good. right yep all looks good all looks good I'm gonna save one extra one so hair that's right Is it? No, because there's meant to be three things. Yeah, it's just saving over the next one now. <laughs> okay, more work to do. So in adding to this... Yes, yeah, so there's only two that's appeared. So saving now is is save, is always saving in slot one. Uh, I need to put some more thought into this. So again, it's the save problem. It's not, it's here. The issue is here. Okay, let's think about this. Okay, so setup number equals zero. Starts the loop. In the first iteration of the loop, setup number zero. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Setup numbers never incremented. In fact, I'm surprised this isn't running an infinite loop. Oh no, because it's a for loop, it's not. Yeah. So that's increasing the integer by one. In fact, it should do that whether or not it finds the save game. It should move on to the next one. Okay, so that should solve that one. Uh, but I think there is an issue here because if, if there's no save setups, 
this will come into here, it will be zero. But the save game won't exist. The highest setup number will be, okay, so highest setup number needs to be defaulted to minus one. I believe that will solve part of the issue as well. Because then if it if it never finds any games, it will it'll have minus one plus one, which is zero, and it'll save in slot zero. Sorted. <laughs> Theoretically. So it's gotta work this time, right? What's the max of setups you can create? Uh, at the minute, it's a thousand. It's actually, it, it's a thousand in uh, save games as well. If you create more than a thousand save games, uh, it will break. <laughs> and that's in the current setup of Empires of the Undergrowth. Thankfully, no one's done that yet. Though it is something I might want to address at some point. Basically. Uh, well, I could increase the number. You could probably put it to 10,000 or 100,000. Uh, the thing is, it does loop through them all. It does check to see if each of those exist, but 1,000, it doesn't a split second. You wouldn't even know it's doing it. So 10,000, maybe it'll take 0.2 seconds, something like that. Fairly noticeable. But no one's hit, hit a thousand yet, so I'm not too worried. So, just to check. Yep, okay, so we've got the third one there now. Right, I'm going to test the save functionality now. So basically save should save over the one that we've got at the minute. So it's going to be wood ants and towhead. So it's advanced replay setup for that one. Save. Right. That didn't work. Okay, next thing to fix. See, I did all this, but I haven't tested it yet. So this thing's wrong with everything. <laughs> Let's find the save. It's in free play setup. When the save button is pressed. Okay, let's see what happens there. Okay, so selected save slot equals none. Stop. So that's the problem. Now selected save slot is happens here so nons come through there so we need to look at the point where that's called which I believe is it's in basic setup Okay, so that's the issue. It hasn't been plugged in yet. I 
that's not that. Bring that up here. Doesn't need to be down here. It can be here. This should give me a clue. A clue. Just a clue. This should be it, really. Okay, so it needs to find the current option. to find the current option but it needs to get it from the box itself that should do it okay so it's getting the current option then finding out what the current options index is then using that index to find out what the save number is, then creating the save, then create, looking for the file name with that save number, and then passing that through. Hopefully, that'll solve that issue. So there we are, it's got, I can take that off now because we know that works. So that looks like it's coming through correctly. So if that's worked, then that should put us on towhead. Yep, and leaf cut colony. Cool. I haven't put the unit option in the save yet. I will do. It's on my list of things to do. Okay, coming back to chat. Sorry. One hundred plus quadruple setups. And the selection bar of setups. Second so English. And just quantity of setups would not fill the selection bar of setups. The point of leaving the screen. I'm not actually sure what would happen. Because this is using the Unreal Engine stuff. I don't know whether doing that would cause a scroll bar to come up. Unreal Engine might have thought of that. But it might not. You might be right. I mean, in our like save games and that, we don't use a drop-down box like this. 
Although I do use one in the colony in the like the gene thief species. Like the gene thief uh, colony. Anyway, um but yeah you might be right, it might be worth looking into that. Anyway, so the next thing, there's a couple of things that needs to ha that need to happen. Um, save as needs to change the the setup screen to be after after you've saved a setup as it needs to change the script the preplay setup screen to be editing the. The new saved colony. So as we do that, it should be in. So it needs to edit free play setup, but it does it from this. So it runs save free play setup. I can actually make it happen in here because this this. Yeah. Okay, so when it saves a game to the slot, doesn't matter what game it is, it should then change itself to be editing that game. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to oh, no, not that. I'm going to have a look at Gonna have a look at the uh, the setup code. Okay, so any of the game setup doesn't need to change because you've it's that's fine. It should be exactly the same as what it is. However, certain things will need to change. Yeah, this. Okay, so I'm going to make a function which does this instead. So, update. Update save slot. And what this needs to take in is the setup and a save slot. I want it to essentially do what this does. But also to update the save slot.
think that's all it needs to do. Everything else will remain the same. Okay, so. So it's called update save slot. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And said, instead, we're just going to run update save slot. Basically, I'm making sure I'm not redoing anything. There's a central point for stuff. So anytime we want to update the save slot, we run that function. Uh, and the other place we want to do it is just after it's saved as. Okay, so now, theoretically, we should be able to we should be able to uh, go into another final test, for example, go into the advanced settings. So that's for another final test. Change a couple of things. So nest invasion attack waves off. Map banks, time of day noon. Okay, uh, then save that as Okay, so let's change the name of that to update save slot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on nest invasions and save. Then go cancel. Okay, so this, yeah. So basically the setup needs to come backwards now. Although if I cancel, maybe it doesn't, maybe it's only if I accept it needs to come backwards. Either way, oh, it won't appear there yet. There we are, update save slot. And I changed something. Yeah, I think that's right. I turned nest invasions back on. And Oh, our time of day is wrong. Ugh. Time of day is not updating. Maybe the save just isn't working. It might be. Turn attack waves off. Save. Cancel. Cancel. New game. Attack waves did definitely go off. Night. Save. Cancel, cancel, new game. Time of day is not updating. All right, let's deal with time of day not updating then. God, the amount of stuff.
So the question is, is time of day not updating or is it the same issue we had before? I can't see how it's the same issue we had before. It might be that we just haven't set that up right. Uh, so again, when we press the advanced setup button, Time of day, here's time of day. Maybe it's not saving correctly, possibly. I find that hard to believe, seeing as everything else is saving correctly, but maybe it's something to do with the byte thing. No, other things did save correctly. Zero is being passed through there. So that suggests it's morning. So that's correct. Let's change that to night. Okay, I need to put a break point in the save button. I'll probably go for another half an hour, uh, people, and then um, and then I'll carry on. Uh, infestation's a bit of a funny one. It's a landmark, um, but you might not know it's there. So the infestation landmark, all it is, is it's a group of creatures which build up at a certain point and do nothing else but hold that position. Um, so it's not a particularly interesting landmark, but it can cause uh, like a large amount of creatures that you wouldn't expect to be at that point in the game to build up at certain positions. It's probably a good candidate for removal, to be honest, because it's not a particularly interesting landmark. So if, basically, if you start the game and you notice there's a big group of creatures stationary at a certain point, you'll notice they stay there for a long period of time, and that it's not, um, and that they don't move. That's the infestation landmark. Ah, ah, hello again. <laughs> right, Tony Dion. Good to, good, good to have you back with us. Um, all we're doing at the minute is is free play menus, which is... You'd be surprised how difficult it's turning out to be <laughs> with everything that can go wrong. Pretty much everything I've done has not worked on the first try and I've had to fix it. Um... You'll be able to look back over the stream afterwards. Uh, I did speak about a couple of things. Uh, something I haven't spoke about yet, which I intend to in a minute, is what the others have been working on. And I'll have a look at the... Uh, what do you call it? The source control commits to st and, and go over what the others have been working on at the minute. So I'll do that shortly. 
Uh, I'm stopping at half past. So, another 25 minutes. My uh, throat can only take talking for so long. Okay, so the that's the game set up. This is the point where it's saving. Before I do that, at this save point. Just me getting some error information. Well, there's some information out to see if I can track down this error. If the, the time of day not saving. I think the time of day is not saving, but I guess this will... It should, should give us some information about it. Okay, yeah, so it's saving is zero despite me changing the value. So let's have a look at that. It might just be that I forgot to do it in the um, packing. Is this time of day coming out at selected time? Ah. Right, yeah, that's wrong. So that's what's wrong. It's doing this thing called selected time, which I don't think is actually used anywhere anymore. Yep. So that's finding out what index is selected on that option. Ah, oh, slightly difficulty. Right, there's a few things that aren't uh, aren't following the current rule set. By a few, I mean there's two. Thankfully, it's not many. Hello, Madsby too. 
Sometimes I feel the pain you have to go through <laughs> to develop this game. Yeah, does it come through my voice? You feel the the pain. Now, I, I do actually really enjoy what I'm doing. But it still doesn't stop uh stop me groaning when uh when I hit when I hit an issue like that. I've actually been working on these on this menu for days. It's taken ages. Just because everything doesn't work first time. And a lot of this a lot of what I'm having to do is to take into account um localization. So I can't just say if it equals morning in the box. I have to say uh if this num if the if the box is on option zero do this. So then it's an extra thing to remember. So I need to change the integer to a byte, I think. And that and the byte can be plugged into there. I need to do the same with selected difficulty. Although that should literally be the same. I should just be able to do that. Combo boxes do make it a little bit more difficult. It's not unmanageable. Okay, so let's see if that works now. Yeah, saved us three. And now when I cancel and new game and change it to that and advanced setup. Yeah, night. There we are. And difficulty. Let's see if that works as well. Scale with colony. Save. Cancel. Cancel. New game. Setup. Advanced options. Scale with colony. There we go. <laughs> Okay, that's a couple more things fixed. Uh, the the other things I wanted to fix were these. Now I believe these should save for. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. So let me test some of this out. So hermit crab and beach wolf spiderling are the two that's. On in beach creatures. Save that council. Come back in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's broken. <laughs> that's seriously broken. Um, we will deal with that. We will deal with it. I think I'm probably going to do that off stream now, though, because we're coming towards the we're into the last fifteen minutes of the stream. I'm not going to go into that at the minute. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's human nature to, to always moan about whatever you're doing. So I think, I think inevitably every job you do will always get worse the longer you do it. Every job. Um, because you you build up more and more complaints. I know I know plenty of people that move jobs every few years because they've had enough of it.
I personally, I do, I do really enjoy working, working for myself and work and making games. Brilliant. Um, it's a brilliant profession to be in, particularly these days with the amazing tools you've got to do it all. Okay, I'm gonna have a brief talk about uh, what's what's been going on uh, with the rest of the group. Some of this will be new to me actually. They might have made some commits. Okay, so I'm just going to go down the, the list of things that's happened this week. And there's been a few, and I'll explain what they're, what they're referring to and what they could possibly mean. But also take all of this with a pinch of salt, because a lot of it is still yet to be properly tested. And a lot of it's optimization work, which should theoretically improve the game's performance. But quite a few of the optimizations are risky ones, and they might just well break the game. I know one of them at least has already broke the get broke the game, and it's being looked at today. So yeah, what what date was it on Monday? Seventeenth. So looking for things that have happened since the seventeenth, really. Oh, there's a couple of things before then as well. Okay, so uh, an anima a, a quite heavy animation optimization has been put in. Um, this was an optimization we, we wanted to add in a while ago, and we added it for every animation in the game. And the idea is that when an ant is off screen or a creature is off screen, it doesn't play the animation for that creature which seems sensible. Uh, the issue was, when we first implemented it, was that, in fact, uh, the, the ant's attack is tied in with the animation. So at the point in the animation where it connects with the enemy, uh, that's the point where damage is dealt and all that. And this optimization was basically turning that off. So there was a very brief time in the game, a, while, a good long time ago, where ants you weren't looking, where creatures you weren't looking at weren't doing any damage. It was it was quite strange, um, but we've re-implemented it, but only on movement animations. So the attack animations still play when off screen, but movement animations don't play. So the ants still move, but they their legs you won't see their legs moving. So that should be a significant uh, optimization there. Uh, may I keep looking through? Okay, so leaf hoppers, they're, they're the visual things in free play. They, uh, they no longer process animations unless they're in the player view, so they've been significantly updated. Uh, starting to get the Russian uh, translation data files in, so Russian will be coming soon. Some more optimizations of leaf hoppers. Okay, some up some optimizations of creatures looking for other nearby creatures. So this one's actually had a bit of a heavy optimization. Um, and it's one of those ones that's broke a few things. So currently when a creature looks for enemies to attack, what it does is it uh, is it gets all enemies in its in its nearby area and then goes through the sifts through the list and decides which one to attack uh, it looks basically at the closest one that it can attack uh, that's been changed to a circle a circle well a sphere around the ant is being swept out and as soon as it finds one it can attack it attacks that one so uh, essentially imagine it's it's blasting out a sphere from itself and each enemy creature it hits it checks whether it can attack it and it attacks that one rather than just getting everything in it in in a wide sphere it's blasting out the sphere and as soon as it hit, the first one it hits that it can attack it'll go for that target so that should be a nice optimization but it does break things like auras and that they'll need a rethink so the new leaf cutter auras uh, they were currently being applied on the on the just the visual scan um 
so that will need a rethink. I think it'll do some have some issues with. We've got a couple of things in the game like wood ants don't necessarily select the nearest one; they select they select one within the area. Um, so that'll need a bit of a rethink as well. But that should be a nice optimization as well. Should speed the game up quite a lot. Uh, uh, some AI optimizations uh, being nativized. Uh, I won't go into what that means. I briefly mention it. It's basically blueprint classes. You know, the, the wire has been plugged into stuff that has an overhead with it. But what nativization does is turn that, turn them into code. And it's something added into Unreal Engine. And it only works on certain classes, but it does, it works on that one. So. That sh the minimum the minimum thought process should be a lot more uh, should be a lot less overhead with it. Um, okay, so something that was happening in the game was the recount of how many resources you had was happening all over the place, and it was a complete recount. So it it threw away the numbers and recounted everything, which is fine. Only it was happening so so frequently that it was actually slowing the game down. So we've um, we've uh, we we currently it has again it hasn't been tested but the calls to updating food totals have been removed and instead we doing them on the fly as we go. Uh, I suspect there'll be situations where the the count is wrong because of that, uh, and we'll need to go through tech testing this all needs to be tested a lot of these optimizations are quite dangerous so they'll i will we'll be definitely having a beta testing period whilst we're testing the free play updates we'll test all these as well um you mentioned torbjorn you mentioned the velvet worm um yeah velvet worm is a creature that we intended to have in the rainforest update but never got round to we did actually touch on it in our meeting and basically we decided that we do want to have the velvet worm in the game a lot of the work for it has already taken place in fact i'll give you a sneak peek of the i'll give you i'll give you a sneak peek of it why not um this is stuff that was added to the game before we uh a lot of it was done before the leaf cutter update came out, but we decided we couldn't get it to the point we wanted it by time release. But I think we've decided we want to have the velvet worm in the game. Uh, but we, but it might take a while yet. It's not our top priority. It wouldn't surprise me if it came into the game with one of these extra missions I was talking about, like the side missions. Uh, where's John Test level? I think it's just called John Test Level. It might just be Test Level. Ah, it's John Test Level. I'll come back to the optimizations in a second once I've. Uh... Okay, uh, whilst, whilst that's loading, I'll, I'll have a look at the next one. Uh, so, the way creature scans currently, yeah, yeah I, I've, I've gone through that. Okay, so Matt's been going through the textures in the game and making them lower resolution uh, for ones that can be lower resolution. Um, there's going to be some tweaking to do here, and basically you might have overdone it on some of them. So during testing, if some of the textures look weird, um, then, uh, then we'll be reassessing that. But basically, he's massively reduced the video memory, which should help people with lower end cards. Um, it should also improve the chances of the game working on cards that it shouldn't work on. But hopefully that massive texture reduction stuff should work out. If you just have a quick sneak peek at this. Uh, rainforest. I think it's in here. Yeah, velvet worm. Right, a lot of the work on this was done before the leaf cutter update came out. 
But as you can see, it's quite a different creature than what we normally have in the game. Uh, if we have a quick nosy at it, it's probably glitchy as anything. He is indeed a long boy. Well, apparently he's got thorns. <laughs> But yeah, there's still there's still a lot of work to do with him. As you can see, he's, he's messing up a bit during his attack there, and he hasn't we haven't done any of like the spray his spray attack or anything like that. But his his movement works pretty well actually, I think. Apart from the flickering. Oh, obviously, yeah. If if, if we at when we actually do it, finish implementing it, it will uh, it will do its uh, spray. Yeah, you see it's a bit glitchy at the minute. Though this was more of a proof of concept than anything. Let me just shift him out. Let me shift him out of the way so we can actually see him move around a bit. But the movement's actually pretty, pretty good. But it's not... It's not doubling back on itself or anything like that anymore. But obviously, yeah, the combat needs some work and its tail going into the wall and that sort of thing. There's plenty of work that needs to be done on it. <laughs> like a circle there. But yeah, that's an early look at the Velvet Worm. It seems to have a huge amount of health. I can't actually remember doing stats for it. Oop. I think that's my fault for shoving it in the wall. There we are. The Thorns thing's uh, going to be reworked a bit. That was the uh, first attempt at having some icon for thorns but I don't I think it needs more work so it's, it is going into the walls a little bit there although that might actually be um, there's actually a, a, a bug with one of the optimizations at the minute which is actually breaking collisions uh, so that actually might be that that might not actually be the a problem with the velvet worm code that might be yeah, the bug. Yeah, yeah, this uh this sort of movement certainly does open up quite a few creature types. Uh and as we go forward we'll probably look into that. Adding that sort of thing. Anyway, I'll let that walk around in circles whilst I, uh, whilst I carry on going through the optimizations. Then we'll we'll end the stream there. Um, okay, so yeah, that's talking about the texture size reductions. Still, I've mentioned that already. A couple more nativization of leaf cutter blueprints. Uh, Stopped creature bound scaling up. Right. Apparently, apparently that boosts performance. Uh, I'm not quite sure what he means there. Added some more optimizations. There's, that one's just a generic optimization. Sometimes the optimizations are so small he doesn't. Matt doesn't mention what exactly what he's done. Uh, turned off both super and normal nav mesh walking. Okay, so the, the, we've we're experimenting with nav mesh walking as well, which is where the game moves the amp based on the nav mesh rather than its distance from the rather than checking collisions on the ground. It just it just looks at the 
nav mesh, which is this green thing here. Um, and that did provide a performance boost, but we're, we're currently having issues with it breaking uh, collisions with other creatures. So we'll have to see how that optimization works out. If it does work, it'll be a big one. Uh, and then there's been a few collision group changes. Um, and whatnot. So there's a few, uh, a few of the optimizations. Basically, this week has been spent uh, trying to go over the game and optimizing it. Uh, hopefully, that should improve improve performance on everyone's machines. Um, but like I say, the optimizations will have broke things in the game, and we need to. We, the game's going to need a thorough test. Um, when I do get to release the next update, which will be the free play update. Uh, there'll be a big test coming at that point. Okay, coming back to chat one last time, and then I believe we're done for the day. Uh, first, when I heard about the velvet worm is going to be in the game, I first thought that it would be the blue velvet worm. It's my velvet favorite velvet worm. Yeah, it's well, it's probably. Um, I imagine this is one that. Matt's picked that makes sense for the area that our Ecuador stuff happens in. We often have to make decisions based on, sometimes we make decisions based on what's cool, but um, it does kind of have to make sense with what uh, with what's going on in that area. And that's not to say it won't have extra skins, it might do. Some of the creatures in the game have multiple skins. Anyway, right, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, just a bit of a longer one than normal. Um, no, uh, I don't think I, I've, I've got a few th events I need to be at over the weekend. I will be working on the game from time to time over the weekend, but probably won't be streaming any of it but I should be streaming again next week uh, I'll make sure I'm I'm on on Thursday definitely and there might be some bonus ones earlier in the week but I won't promise those uh, hopefully by that point we'll have completely finished the menu um, And we can move on to, we can get back to either map work or actually implementing some of the victory conditions. Uh, hopefully I've already, I'd have already started that by that point. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the stream and we will be back next week. Have a good, uh, have a good weekend everyone.